What is going on my friend, it's Danny here from foxohealth.com and in this video I'm going to talk about why your chair may be killing you. So I know that's quite a dramatic title but there is some truth to this statement. So your chair, or more specifically prolonged sitting, is damaging your health and that has been shown. So I'm going to talk about the reasons, some of the reasons why that is. So I'm coming at you today from my treadmill desk here, this is my home treadmill desk and I'll talk about some of the benefits and my experiences with it later on in the video. But first of all let me talk about the chair and why it's damaging. So the first thing we need to think about is, is that our bodies have just not evolved or been designed to, to, to sit. They haven't been evolved that way. They've been evolved to move and be active basically. So if you think about how our ancestors lived, they would be up and about all day, you know, building shelters, hunting and gathering, fishing, surviving basically. So they would be exercising their bodies all day and there would be very little or no sitting at all. Now, on the flip side, think about how we live in our modern society, in the West especially. So we'll get up in the morning and we'll eat breakfast at the breakfast table and then we'll jump in the car or the train and we sit down on the way to work. And then if we work in an office, we sit down at our desks all day and then work finishes, we jump back in the car and sit down on the way back home and then we sit at the dinner table and we sit down and have our dinner and then we'll sit in front of the TV for a couple of hours. So obviously not, so we're, we're sitting pretty much all day, which is pretty bad. And I know not everyone lives like that, obviously that's just an example, but I think the example is actually a powerful um, observation and really shows or, or gives a good reason why our kind of modern bodies look so awful compared to our ancestors who had very kind of lean and toned bodies and also helps us to explain why we're getting such dramatic increases in disease rates as well. So I'm going to talk about some problems that have been associated to prolonged sitting. So here is a list. So we've got elevated triglycerides, we've got poor cholesterol panel, we've got cancer, we've got diabetes, we've got heart disease, heart attacks, obesity, stiffening arteries, softening bones, depression, hypertension, varicose veins and back pain as well. And these associations can be backed up by over 10,000 scientific publications. So there's science behind this too. Now, interestingly, a guy called Professor David Duncan from the Bake IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute, he made a bold claim that got quite a lot of attention. He said that for every hour that we sit, we lose approximately 20 minutes of life. So to put it another way, for every hour, hour we sit, our life expectancy will drop by 20 minutes. So that's a very bold claim, but it's uh, um, quite alarming and maybe there's some truth to it. So we should probably pay attention. So I've reeled up a big list of um, problems that can be associated to prolonged sitting, but I'm going to dive into two in particular and explain those in a bit more detail. So those are obesity and diabetes because they're quite rampant in today's um, lifestyle and sort of today's society and they're quite dangerous as well. So let's talk about obesity first of all. So obesity is obviously when we're overweight and it's been shown now that if you have obesity you have multifold, multiple fold increased risk of diabetes, heart disease and cancer as well. So being obese is, is pretty bad news and it's dangerous as well. So if people are trying to tell you that being obese is fine, you should be happy and accept it. I think it's probably very likely they're uned, uneducated in this area and that they're probably mean well but they're, they're doing you a disservice. So it's, it's a problem we need to tackle basically. So obesity, so how does prolonged sitting cause obesity? Well, I think this one's pretty obvious and we can all kind of work it out in our minds basically. So when we're sitting, we're not really using any calories, we're not burning many calories. And when we're standing, we're burning more calories. So if we eat a meal, we want to use the energy from that food um, as fuel basically. And if we eat a meal and we sit down, we're not, we're, gonna, we're not gonna be burning that energy, we're gonna store it in our livers or as fat basically. So if we eat a meal and we sit down, we're not using calories and we get fatter. Now on the flip side, if we keep standing up and we, if we eat a meal, we stand up, we burn the calories and we get slimmer basically. And that's a pretty broad overview, but that's pretty much what it boils down to. So it's been shown, um, studies have actually shown that people that stay slim compared to people that put on weight, even though they eat the same amount of food, they actually do so because they're just more active and they sit down less. So it's not even because they're going running more or lifting weights, although that does play a part in it. It's just they burn calories, something through called a non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that's things like just you know, washing the dishes, doing the housework, um, dancing, gardening, going for a walk. It's those kind of things because they're more active, they're burning more calories and they're sitting down less. Now, here, here's, what's, here's where it gets quite interesting. So it's been shown 
that a shape of a, the shape of a brain of a sitter will actually look different from the shape of a brain of a mover. So those people that move more, they're actually more pulled to do, do so automatically after they've had a meal, just because of the structure of their brains. So they eat a meal and they're kind of naturally pulled to move more on a kind of typical day. Now the good news is, it's been shown that our brains are actually very plastic and they can change shape and that's said to be down to something called neuroplasticity factors. So that means that the, the shape of a brain of a sitter can actually change to the shape of a brain of a mover. So you just have to kind of build the habit basically. So after you eat a meal, you have to kind of keep getting up and being active. And what happens is over time, the brain actually gets used to the, the propensity to walk and it will kind of change its structure over time, um, which is encouraging. So it apparently it doesn't take long for that to happen. It takes about three weeks for that to happen, which is really, really good news. But a word of warning, it can go the other way just as easily. So we need to kind of keep the habit ingrained and keep doing it basically. But that's, that's good news and that kind of shows why um, you know, what you can do to kind of prevent being obese through prolonged sitting. Just get up more and be more active. So that's obesity. So let's now talk about diabetes. So diabetes is a really big problem um, at the moment. Um, you could even argue that we're facing an epidemic of diabetes and we know the rates are going to get worse and worse. So very broadly speaking, diabetes is basically where we have too much sugar in our bloodstream and having too much sugar in the blood is a bad thing. So Dr. Jason Fung, he is one of the world's leading experts in treating diabetes naturally. He says, that, and I'm paraphrasing slightly here, he says that when we have too much sugar in the blood, it literally causes us, our bodies to rot from the inside out which is pretty bad, so that leads to things like amputations and, and fatty liver disease and, and blindness and that kind of stuff. So we don't want too much sugar in the blood, we want to get rid of it, especially after eating a meal. So if we eat a meal, the, the, we extract sugar from the food and that ends up in our bloodstream and as I say, we want to get it out of our blood quickly. So how do we do that? <clears throat> Again, we just need to be active and we need to move basically. So that's, that's the kind of key to it. So if we eat, it's been studies have shown that if we eat a meal, especially one high in carbs and sugar, and we stay sitting down, our blood sugar levels will spike to mountain-like peaks and they last for about approximately two hours, which is pretty bad news. But the great news is that if we just go for a 15 minute walk at just one mile per hour, which is pretty slow, those, those dangerous levels will half to safe levels. So that's a really, really powerful strategy that you can apply. So when you have a meal, just kind of go for a, go for a walk basically, and that will sort the problem out. So that's probably one of the most kind of more kind of sinister things about the chair that we don't realize, is that when we eat a meal and we stay sitting down, it causes kind of sugar to slosh around in our, in our bloodstream like a, an oil spill in the ocean. It's damaging our, our health. <clears throat> and massively increasing our risk of being pre-diabetic and diabetic as well, which is a big problem. So that's diabetes. So those are kind of two areas that the, uh, the chair is really, um, plays a significant role in, in causing those problems basically. So we want to avoid that. So, so a great strategy is just be more active. So generally in your lifestyle, if you're more active, you'll avoid some of these problems. We want to kind of limit the uh, time where it's kind of sitting down and almost going like a, a sitting fast and try and track the time when we're not sitting to try and make it a game and, and avoid sitting as much as possible. So if you work in an office like I do, it's quite hard because you've got your desk set and you kind of need to sit down. So I use a, a treadmill desk. So I do work in an office, but I can work from home a couple of days a week, which is really good news because I can use this, this thing here. Now adjustable speed, I can speed up or slow it down. At the moment I'm walking about 1.2 miles per hour. And a lot of people ask me, how can you kind of type and, and walk at the same time? <coughs> and I was worried about that at first as well, but it's actually very, very easy. Um, you start using it and with about five minutes you're used to it. You don't even think about walking. It's like a, driving a car when you don't kind of think about the changing gears or, or using the pedals. It's like that really just kind of type away happily. So I can type away, answer emails, I can dial into conference calls and just walk away. And I actually find that my concentration really increases when I'm using this. Um, and I can think more clearly and I'm a bit more creative as well. And if I work at home all day, I can easily get in you know, three or four hours, even more if I want to, and just walk away and, and I kind of burn off those calories basically. So that's a really good little strategy. So they're quite expensive. Um, I think this is a, life, this is a lifespan model. 
Uh, but if you don't want to take the plunge and, and kind of buy an expensive one, you can actually make one quite easily. Just get a kind of normal treadmill, a running one, and build a desk over it so you can probably build one pretty inexpensively. Um, so that's basically it. So that's the video and why your chair may be killing you. So it's quite an important topic and um, it's been getting more and more attention. You don't kind of, kind of make the connection when you hear that statement, but when you think about it, it does make a lot of sense, especially when it comes to kind of eating a meal and staying sitting down and having all that sugar kind of slosh around in your blood, causing diabetes and, and, and obesity as well. So one to bear in mind. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button. And until the next time, please take care.